The last piece of information we want to look at now is how we find the inverse of something given as a function. And so we need a definition first. So if f of x is the function, and it has points x, f of x, then our inverse function we're going to denote as f to the minus 1 power of x. And since this is function notation, we know that this minus 1 means inverse. This means inverse. It does not mean 1 over f of x. So don't do that. But if this is the case, then this is the inverse of f of x, and it has points of f of x, x. It takes the output, makes it the input, makes the input the output. And so long as f of x is 1 to 1, then we can find the, our inverse appropriately. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to start with our basic function, or a simple function, and we're going to find the inverse of it. But to do that, the way we check our answer is, by definition, if we compose a function with its inverse, we'll get an x. Whatever we put in is what we get out. And it doesn't matter the order. This is one time where order doesn't matter. If I compose the inverse with a function or the function with the inverse, I get an x by itself. That's how we check our answer. So let's look at a couple of cases. Suppose we have f of x equals 3x plus 4. And remember that when we had our set of points, we made our inputs outputs and our outputs inputs. We're going to do that same thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the f of x with a y. And then wherever I see a y, I'm going to put an x. And wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a y. So I've swapped them. Whatever was one is now the other. And now, so we let our x's change places with our y's. We then solve for y. We want to get the y by itself. So we start by subtracting 4. So x minus 4 equals 3y. Divide by 3. Switch sides so that the y is on the left. And we replace the y with an f inverse of x. And I have algebraically found my inverse. We check our answer by plugging this into here, or f of x into f inverse of x. And I'm going to plug the inverse into the original. So wherever I see an x here, I'm going to put this. So we're going to get 3 times the quantity x minus 4 over 3 plus 4. And notice that the 3 on top and the 3 on the divi bottom divide out. So we get x minus 4 plus 4. And minus 4 plus 4 is 0, so I'm left with just an x. And since this happens when I compose them, then I know that this is, in fact, my answer. Let's repeat this a few more times. Suppose we have g of x equals x cubed minus 2. So our first step, we're going to replace y, g of x with y. Then we're going to swap, so we get an x on the left and a y cubed on the right. So the x and the y swapped. To solve for x, we're going to add 2 to both sides. So we get x plus 2 equals y cubed. Now, now we take the cube root of both sides because the cube root of y cubed will give us just a y. And we swap sides so that the y is on the left. And then we replace the y with g inverse of x equals the cube root of x plus 2. To check our answer, I'm again going to plug my cube root into my cube so that they will cancel. So we're going to get the cube root of x plus 2 cubed minus 2. Cube a cube root they cancel out. We get left with an x plus 2 minus 2. Gives me an x by itself. So when I compose g with its inverse, I got an x by itself. So this is my answer. One final problem, and then we'll leave this alone. Suppose that h of t, we're going to change the variables around a little bit, is equal to 2 over t minus 1. Well, we still start the same way. We're going to let y equal 2 over t minus 1. And we're going to swap the y and the t. So we're going to let t equal 2 over y 
minus 1. Now the problem is the y minus 1 is on the bottom, so what we have to do first is multiply it up. So we're going to get t times y minus 1 equals 2. Distribute the t, so ty minus t equals 2. We're now going to add t to both sides to get ty equals 2 plus t. Divide both sides by t. And we get our answer of y equals 2 plus t over t. Now when we compose this, this gets a little bit tricky. So again, I'm going to take, because this is h inverse of t now, and I'm going to plug my inverse into my original. So I'm going to get h composed with h inverse of t equals 2 over 2 plus t over t minus 1. That looks a little bit tricky, but remember, we can separate this out. So this is 2 over 2 over t plus t over t minus 1. t over t is 1. Plus 1 minus 1 goes away, so I'm left with 2 over 2 over t, which is equal to 2 times t over 2, which divides out, and we're left with just a t. So this is, in fact, our answer, since we got the input variable all by itself.